All right, so we already learned the hinge theorem. Let's kind of recap that real quick. So we took these notes. Um, the hinge theorem basically says if you have two triangles and you've got two sides marked congruent to two sides, and the what we call the included angle, which would be this guy right here, if that angle is greater than this angle over here, then the side opposite that angle is also greater than the side opposite that one. That was the hinge theorem, okay? So this next part of the section, like when we did all of these problems, if you look at all of them, there's just numbers. There's no variables involved, no X, just numbers analyzing like which side's bigger than the other one. Now this part of it, inequalities and algebra, is gonna involve some variables. So it's gonna make it a little bit more challenging. So let's look at a few examples together. First one here, so um, you know you're dealing with the hinge theorem if you've got two triangles and two sides are congruent. So like they have these marked congruent and then of course that one's congruent to itself so we know we can use the hinge theorem here to set up some kind of inequality. All right, so now look at the included angle which would be 141 on this triangle. Included angle over here would be this guy, that 9a plus 15. Okay, so to set up an inequality, because we want to solve and figure out what A is. So in order to set up an inequality, look at the sides that are opposite those angles. So opposite this angle is 18, opposite this one is 16. So compare those. 18 is bigger than 16, so this angle is going to be bigger than this angle. So we're going to write that out. We're going to say 141 is greater than... 9a plus 15. And then we solve for a, not too bad. So subtract 15 from both sides. So over here we'd get 126 is greater than 9a. Divide both sides by 9. So we get a is less than, I believe that is 14. All right, now whenever you have your inequality, I always want the variable on the far left side. So just take this whole thing and totally rotate it so it reads that a is less than 14. Awesome, so that is part of your answer. A is some number less than 14, okay? But if you think about it, like could A be any number in the entire world less than 14? Well, I mean, you could test out some numbers, like could A be zero? Well, yeah, if you plug in zero for A, nine times zero is zero plus 15, so you still end up with 15 degrees. That's a legit degree, right? It's a positive number. Uh, but you think about it, it can't be just any number. Because say A is like negative 10. Negative 10 times 9 is negative 90 plus 15, right? You get a negative degree measurement. So that can't happen. So there's got to be a cutoff somewhere. So, and you don't just have to guess and check. I'm going to show you how we're going to do this. Okay, so once you know what A is less than, you have to figure out, if you can, what A is greater than. The way I always do this is after I get this inequality, which is part of my answer, I look back at my picture and find wherever my variable is, which is over here. And I'm going to write that thing down one more time because I'm going to make one more inequality. Okay, so always write that thing down one more time. Now, we have a less than sign. I already know what it's less than, so I'm going to put a greater than sign here to figure out what all of this is greater than. All right, now the part that you have to think about every single time, and it's different in every problem, is what to put on this side. So this is where you're gonna have to use your own logic here, okay? Usually you're either putting zero or 180 right here. So let's look back at our problem. Our variable is in an angle measurement. So think about angles. Now we have something, something, something is greater than something, right? We wanna put something over here, so think. An angle measurement is always greater than what? Well, it can't be negative, so angles are always greater than zero. So we're gonna put zero there. Now, if we were trying to find what A is less than, let's say we were doing 9A plus 15, let's say we already knew what it was greater than over here, and we were looking for what this angle is less than. In that case, you would think, okay, angle measurements, what are they less than? Well, angles are always between zero and 180 because 180 degrees would be a straight line. So we would make that less than 180 and solve it, okay? Which will happen in some problems, but not in this one. So right here, we're solving this. So subtract 15. So we get 9a is greater than negative 15. Divide both sides by nine. So a is greater than negative 15 over nine. Um, go ahead and just simplify that fraction. 
So A is greater than negative 5 thirds. And that is the remaining part of your answer. A is less than 14 and greater than negative 5 thirds. And we will write that like so as a compound inequality. All right, so let's go ahead and try another one. All right, similar type of problem. So always locate your congruent sides. So like eight and eight are congruent. This one right here is congruent to itself. It's the same in both. Okay, so then we look at the included angle over here and the included angle over here, and we're gonna compare these two things and set up an inequality. Okay, so the way we do that was we look at the side opposite those angles. That's our hinge theorem. Okay, nine is less than 11, which means this angle is less than this angle. So I set that up. 47 is less than seven and plus five. Then we go ahead and solve for n, subtract five. So we get 42 is less than seven n, divide by seven, that would be six. And then I wanna to totally rotate that, so my variable is always on the far left. So I'd write n is greater than six. Not too bad getting that first inequality, that's always the easiest part. Okay, but you always wanna to try to find another number. So I know what n is greater than, so I wanna find what n is less than in this case. So the way I do it, I look back at my picture, I locate where that variable is, and I'm gonna write this thing down to make one more inequality. So somewhere put seven and plus five. Okay, to decide what sign to put, if you already have a greater than sign, you wanna know what it's less than. So we're gonna do the opposite sign, and then you have to use logic here to figure out what to put on this side. So think about that. Look at your variable, it is an angle measure. What are all angles less than? Well, they're less than 180. So in this case, we're gonna put 180 over here. Okay, go ahead and solve that. So we get seven in is less than subtracting five. We get 175, divide both sides by seven. So n is less than, what is that, 25? There you go. That would be our other inequality. Go ahead and write it as a compound inequality. So we get this. n is between six and 25. All right, nice job. Let's go ahead and try our last one here. Hopefully I don't get cut off. <laughs> okay, now this one's a little bit different because if you notice your variable is not in an angle measurement, it's actually on a side length. So with angle measurements, we always know that they're between zero and 180. You gotta think about side lengths. Side lengths, what are they always between? Well, they're definitely greater than zero, right? You can't have a negative side length, um, but what's the max a side length could be? Well, if you think about it, there's not a max, right? It's not 180 or 360, those are degree measurements. A side length can be as big as you want it to be, okay? So these ones will be just a little bit different. So, okay, let's go ahead and try to set up a hinge theorem situation here. So we've got some sides marked congruent. We also have the 50s that are congruent. So looking at our included angle over here, it's 68 degrees. Included angle over here is 55 degrees. So we're kind of doing this in reverse now. We're going to look at the sides opposite those angles to write an inequality using this and this. So since 68 is greater than 55, I'm going to make 47 greater than 5x plus 2. Okay, so there's our first inequality. Go ahead and solve it. Subtract that two, divide by five, so we get nine, and then we'll totally rotate that, so x is less than nine, okay? So we wanna try to find what x is greater than now, if we can, so we look back at our problem. Wherever your variable is, I want you to write that thing down and think about it. So the sign, we already have what it's less than, I'm gonna do a greater than sign now think, that's a side length. What are all side lengths greater than? Well, they're greater than zero. So that's what you're gonna solve. So we get x is greater than negative two fifths for our other inequality. So writing that as a compound inequality. Now that one, I think I changed to a decimal here. You could do either one. Since it's a decimal that doesn't repeat, you can just write the decimal. Either one, unless it tells you in the instructions specifically what to do, you can pick. So there you go, you should be able to try the worksheet now.